Friday, April 6th. Fun. I feel like I'm doing one of my vlogs for my vlog channel. By the way, I do vlogs on a vlog channel. If you're interested in seeing those, that channel is called Life with Migraines. And there is a link in the description box. I would love for you to come visit me on that channel. Um, because I only have 23 subscribers. It's cool though. I still like making the videos. But it would be nice to have more people enjoy my content. I have my glasses on today because I'm going to be reading some things off my phone because I'm doing a tag. Uh, I'm sure you can tell that from the title of the video. I probably didn't need to tell you that. Um, I tried to reposition myself a little bit where like maybe some of my altar would show. Ooh, there we go. That's fun. That's fun. You can see my candle. Those are my two journals. You can't see my dragon incense holder, but you can see my bast incense holder and the stick that's burning right now. Alright. I like this. Let's do it. So, I am doing the What's Your Craft tag. This tag was, hang on, I wrote notes. Notes. Uh, it was created by Ashley and Julie. Um, Ashley's YouTube channel is Ashley Adulting, and Julie's is The Island Alien. I will put links to both of their channels below. Uh, I have also seen three other witchy YouTubers do this tag. Um, Alvine Green, I literally just finished watching hers. That's what inspired me to finally get out the camera and do it. Uh, also Dragonfeather369 and Jessica Star the Story Witch. I love all of those women. Um, Alvine just gives me so much energy watching her. I don't know, there's something about her that's adorable. Dragonfeather, I love so much and she's the one that got me into Aminos. And then Jessica Star, the story witch. I thought there's something about her that I just, I adore. I adore. There's a few others that I really adore too, but they're not, they haven't done the tag yet. Shadow Harvest, you probably don't watch my channel, but go do the tag. Uh, I'm tagging you to do the tag. Uh, who else do I really watch all the time that hasn't done it? I can't think of anyone else because I have a bad memory so and you'll you'll realize that in the questions later too um, so to not exclude anyone anybody who is watching this video right now and would like to do this tag do it make a video comment down below and answer them make a blog post whatever and if you do answer these questions in some form or another, leave me a link down below so I can check out your answers too, okay? Uh, I don't know if I said it, but I'm going to link all of those. Not just Ashley and Julie that started it, but I'm also going to link Alvine, Dragonfeather, and Jessica Star too, so you can take a look at theirs. So, there are 30 questions. Let's get started. My phone, you know, locked itself. Okay. When... How did you first know you were a witch? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. I don't have an answer for that. How long have you been practicing? Uh, off and on for about 13 years. Number three. What kind of witch are you? Well... We like our boxes and labels, so we know what everybody is. Um, but there's just too many labels that fit me. So let's just let's just narrow down to a few of them. Definitely eclectic. Um, definitely nocturnal. I am a moon child. I pretty much hate the sun. I tolerate its presence because without it we would all die. But it tries to kill me every time I go outside anyway, so anyway um so eclectic nocturnal um what else there's so many that it's overwhelming but yeah let's just go with eclectic nocturnal all right what path or tradition do you follow i don't there isn't a path or tradition i follow is your craft devotional or secular? How do you incorporate your faith into your craft if you do? Uh, 
I mean, I do include deities. They're not included in every single thing I do. If I cast a circle, they are. Um, if I do a ritual, a lot of times it'll be with a specific deity. Um, um, but they're not included in every single thing I do. Not every single day. But they are there. And the way that I incorporate them into my magic is through rituals. Uh, invoking them to assist me in the ritual or invoking them when casting a circle and things like that um, but it's not just that like um, for example Anubis my patron um, you can find out more about my relationship with him if you look at my video called A for Anubis um, he's pretty much always around so sometimes I literally just talk to him because I'm home alone like a decent amount um, since I am disabled and can't work but my husband does work a full-time job so um, I just have my cats and first of all they sleep during the day and second of all they're not they're not well one of them is pretty vocal but <laughs> it's not words I can understand um, so a lot of times um, I will just talk about my day and things that are happening and whatever to Anubis I just verbally talk to him um I don't get like verbal responses back but I know he's there so uh but I don't do like offerings I don't do true like worship um because I don't feel the deities are necessarily above me I feel like deities are all part of the divine and we are all part of the divine uh, animals are part of the divine. I have a cat sleeping right over here. Um, they're all part of the divine. Like, I feel like we're all on the same level. We're all part of the divine. Um, are you closeted or in the open? How do your friends and family feel? Uh, it depends on who we're talking about. My husband, my mom, I'm open. My dad knows I do stuff with tarot cards, but that's as far as it goes. Uh, my, the rest of my, like, aunts, uncles, that kind of thing. Uh, some of them know because I don't, like, hide it on Facebook. Like, I post tarot polls and stuff on Facebook and, and I do a lot of that kind of stuff. So, it's there. Um, my dad's side of the family is not on, doesn't really do anything on Facebook, so they don't see it. And that's fine. My husband's family, his mom's side is very nice and open-minded. And I have seen, like, some of his aunts like some of my posts of, like, tarot and stuff. Um, so, I don't think they have a problem with it. Um, his dad and his stepmom, though, are very close-minded people. So... I generally exclude them from posts. On Facebook you can be like friends except and like check mark people you don't want to see it. I do that with them. Um solitary or coven. I've always been solitary. Uh something you wish someone had told you or something you wish you knew when you first started. Um when I first started it would have been more detail on witchcraft versus wicca and paganism and how all those terms interrelate and the reason is is because i was introduced to the to the craft through wicca and i have great respect for wicca it's how i came to the path but i walked away from the path for a while because wicca didn't fit me um after a while trying to make it fit me there were bits and pieces of it i loved but a lot of it i didn't and so it didn't fit me and i didn't know there was another way. <laughs> I didn't know there was anything but Wicca. So that that's what would have been nice. But like who would have told me that? Because my friend that got me into it was Wiccan. So obviously that's what she knew. Um, what resource was most valuable for beginning your practice? Hell if I know. Because when I began, I began as a Wiccan. So I had a friend. I did read a lot of books. Books are good. Um, now I do a lot of YouTube. And I've really molded my practice to fit me more. I think YouTube has probably been the biggest resource. 
let's see what was your first spell i do not remember not even a little what do you do when you feel out of touch with your craft well i honor that there's a reason i feel out of touch with it and then i try to slowly work my way back in it happens usually it's due to my medical stuff or depression or something like that though it's usually temporary have you ever doubted your faith or ability all the time all the time all the time i actually have a very scientific mind i'm very connected to the air element i'm connected to all the elements is that a question on here let's see no okay cool uh, I'm connected to all the elements and I try to balance that, but air is my element and I have a, a very logical and scientific mind for the most part. And so it is hard sometimes with that to not just be like, I'm just making this up. You know what I mean? So, uh, I just deal with it. It's, it's a thing. It's a thing. Grounding techniques, uh, I meditate. Meditate is how I ground. Um, I envision in my mind that I would love to go outside and sit by a tree, but I also really dislike bugs and the heat. And I live in Florida, so it's hot all year round. <clears throat> it is 83 degrees right now. That is too hot for me and my chronic migraines. Um, biggest pet peeve in the magical community? Two of them. One is the people that think their way is the only way. Um, and I've seen this so many times. And even worse, not only do they feel people who do it differently are wrong, but I've seen many of these people also feel that people who do it differently are somehow invalidating their practice. And that literally makes no sense. So, for example, um, there are people on both sides of the debate on can you work with deities from different pantheons? There are some people that think absolutely not. Uh, I do. I work with Egyptian deities, Greek deities. Um, I've worked with Norse a couple times. Um, I've worked with Greek and Egyptian, or oh, uh, Hindu. I've worked with some Hindu deities, but Greek and Egyptian are the are the ones I've worked with the most, and I continue to work with the most. Um, but I actually saw someone, a witch, say, this was posted in a in a social network type thing. Um, that she is a Hellenic witch, so she works with the Greek pantheon exclusively, and that she's worked hard to make her practice, like, reflective of, you know, Hellenic traditions and deities and that kind of thing, and that people who worship multiple deities are invalidating her practice. And, like, she was upset, like, angry about it. And I'm like, it does nothing to your practice. I could worship the flying spaghetti monster in my witchcraft. It has no bearing on what you do. None. Nothing. Not a damn thing. Does it affect you? Doesn't affect you. And if you feel like what someone else does in their practice affects your practice, I'm sorry, but you need to do some inner soul work. You need to do some shadow work. You need to figure your shit out. Because that's on you, not on them. There is no right way to do witchcraft. None. Witchcraft is ancient. It is a very ancient practice. And it was has been practiced all over the world. And every culture has different ways they practice it. And we don't know what it was like in ancient times. We have ideas from anthropology and archaeology and such, but we don't know what ancient witches in 
all of these various areas of the world did. So you may think your practice is completely based on ancient witchcraft, but you don't know that. And another thing, if Anubis and Aphrodite and Kali and Loki and Anana, that's the one I've worked with. If those deities are all willing to work with me, then who are you to tell me I can't work with all of them? They're willing to work with me. I'm not going to go to to Kali and be like, I know you're willing to work with me, but I can't because this other witch said I have to stay with one pantheon. That's bullshit. Now, when I'm saying you every time, that's just a general vague you as in the people who feel this way. Not you personally. You personally are cool. I like you. I like you a lot. Anyway, that's my biggest pet peeve. Um, and the other one would be the people who feel they have a right to determine who and who is not a witch. Uh, whether it's, I just watched a video from Shadow Harvest today where she was talking about witchy clothes and, uh, and she made a little bit of mention of people who think that the way you dress somehow impacts whether or not you're a witch. Like if you dress in, um classic witchy stuff like black and crystals and stuff like that then some people consider that you're not really a witch you're like a fake witch you're a wannabe witch but you're not really a witch um and things like that and uh and then alvine in her tag of this brought up briefly how people think christian witches aren't a thing and can't be a thing and that's utter bullshit too there is no council of witches that sits over all of us and gets to determine who and who is not a witch. It's not a thing. It doesn't exist. It is no one's place to do so. Pay attention to your own practice instead of judging other people's practices. Okay? The world would be a better place if we would do that. Pay attention to your shit, not other people's. Because it's not affecting you. Now, if it's something that's affecting you, okay, that's, that's a whole other thing. But what I'm talking about is someone else's witchcraft practice and it's not affecting you. Unless they're throwing curses at you or something. We're not talking about that. Alright. Whew. 17 minutes in. And we're like halfway done. Biggest spell disaster. I've never had a spell disaster. View on black magic. Uh, I don't think there is such a thing. Uh, magic is magic. And people generally use black magic to mean like evil curses. Magic is magic. We set the intention for the magic of whether it's good or bad. You can do good magic or white magic with bad intentions and then it's bad. I don't know. Black magic isn't a thing to me. Do what magic you like. Okay? Uh, is witchcraft an everyday thing or only for special occasions? Uh, I am doing my best to make it an everyday thing. I want it to be an everyday thing. I'm trying to, like I know there's tons of little ways to incorporate witchcraft into your everyday. And my biggest issue is I just don't think of them. I literally just don't think of them. I'll do something and then afterwards I'm like, damn, I could have done this or this to, you know, make that more witchy, you know? Whatever. Anyway. Do you meditate? Yes. Daily for the most part. Do you practice divination? Yes. Uh, I have multiple tarot decks. My most recent acquisition and my current favorite is Tarot of the Hidden Realm. I have five tarot decks total. Um, for all of these, I have walkthroughs of them. If you look for my playlist that's like tarot reviews or something like that, you'll see them. I also have three oracle decks that I use. I also walk through some of these on my channel. Oh, I dropped my playing cards. Uh, I am trying to learn more about divination with playing cards. 
I have these playing cards that I absolutely love. They're plastic and clear, and I love them, and they shuffle wonderfully. Um, I have two pendulums, actually. This is my most recent one, though. Beautiful little pendulum. Um, and then I also have a set of D&D &D dice, for those of you that know what D&D &D is. And I use these for dice divination. Very fun little... This one's a D20. Uh, for dice and pendulum, um, I typically just use them for yes or no questions. I don't use tarot or oracle for yes or no. And so far I've only used my playing cards for yes or no also. So I have multiple forms of divination I use. I like divination. Uh, moon phases, planetary correspondences, day of the week, hour, is it irrelevant or key? Uh, irrelevant to a point. I feel like it's not necessary. Um, if you need a spell done, like you don't need to wait until the moon is in the third quarter and it's in, you know, Mars. That doesn't make sense. Why did I say Mars? And like Mars is in, I don't know. Sagittarius, I fuck, I don't know. The point is, you don't need to wait. You just, you don't need to wait for everything to line up perfectly. It's just, it's not a thing that needs to be done. I do believe, potentially, you could give a little more power to your spell by doing that, but I don't believe it's a huge amount. Um, because we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to do spells in a timely manner. Spell language. Simple, dress it up, poetry, silent. Um, I tend to do silent. Occasionally I'll write like a quick little poem. Um, I did create a spell to aid with sleep that I wrote like a little short poem to Selene, the moon goddess. Um, yeah. If I'm inspired to do a poem, I'll do it. But otherwise, very simple. Do you keep a book of shadows or grimoire? Yes. Uh, this one is my tarot journal, this one is more like my grimoire, but I also have a lot in an electronic one. Do you have an altar? <laughs> is it dedicated to any specific deity, season? No. No. Um, I mean I have a lot of bast stuff on it. I have bast, bast, and bast. You can see Anubis. You can't see it, but there's also a picture of Aphrodite on that wall. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have it to anything in particular. Thoughts on the afterlife, reincarnation, that's my thoughts. Uh, would you teach and practice wood witchcraft to your children? Yes, if I had children, but I don't. Uh, what are some witch books that have influenced you? I don't know because it's been a long time since I've read very many. Tools. Handmade, natural, only my will. Uh, overall, I feel like the only tool you need is you. And I don't have very many tools. I have candles and incense and I have little figures and crystals. But like, I don't have a wand and an asame and a broom and a cauldron and a pentacle and a god I can't even remember all the tools that there are I don't have any of that stuff and it's not necessary to me as far as natural or handmade I mean go with what you like you might like some handmade you might like some natural while I feel like all I need is myself I'm also very much drawn to pretty things and shiny things I have seen some beautiful ones online and like in Etsy shops and while I don't know if I would ever use one <laughs> I want one <laughs> so yeah do you have a magical name I do it is sage serenity silver I change my mind constantly on that but that's the one I keep going back to uh, let's see 
then we have the last question is favorite season herb crystal rune tarot card symbol season i'm gonna say the exact same thing alvine did august august autumn <laughs> let me I'm speak properly autumn is my favorite followed by winter followed by spring i hate summer which is why i live in a place where it's summer all year round <laughs> Herbs, uh, I don't really work with herbs much. I love um, roses just because I love the smell. I have some little dried rose buds in a dish right here. Um, I love sage because I love the smell. I love rosemary because of the smell. Uh, I haven't played with runes. I don't have a favorite tarot card really. Um, I have cards that I always look at in decks to see what they look like, and those would be the moon, the devil, death, queen of swords, high priestess, that's probably all. Favorite symbol? Well, I do have a trigetra on my wrist, so let's go with that. Um. Yeah, all right, 30 questions. Yeah, you know, it's about 30 minutes of long for a video. It's about a minute a question. That's because some were really short and some were really long. So, all right, I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for joining me and have a great rest of your day. Bye.